process you use with him, and why do you think God brought you together? That's funny, because Elvis used to say to me back in the day, he would say, when we would sit and philosophize and talk about our relationship and, you know, future and having children and that kind of thing, which we did talk about, he would say, honey, do you ever wonder why God brought you to this point, why God put you with me out of all the women in the world, you know, God put you here with me? And of course, that was pretty trippy. <laughs> I said, yeah, I do sometimes think of that. And he said, I think there's a reason for everything. And we even talked about then those years. He said, maybe one day you'll write a book and you'll be able to speak about who I really was, who I really have been as a person. And I thought that was pretty staggering, you know, that he would have that kind of insight and that kind of trust in me too, to, to really truly know him as a living, breathing human entity, a human being, not just Elvis Presley on the marquee. You know, I got to see his frailty, you know, his um, human weakness, uh, his strength. I got to see every aspect of him. So I thought it was pretty wonderful that he trusted me to maybe represent who he was in, in some way. Um, and I, and, you know, he and I both shared a belief that we believe in life, you know, and I believe that life unfolds as it's meant to, and that there is divine providence. I do believe that there is something unseen and wonderful that works and, you know, permeates all being and that brings us all together for different purposes. Um, and, and he and I shared that belief. So, I, you know, I, I didn't think it was by chance, for sure. And, and yes, I do know how crazy my life has been. And when I was writing this memoir, I would have to stop sometimes and think, wow, this is just crazy. <laughs> you know, you couldn't make this up. You couldn't make up the fact that I lived with the king of rock and roll, the, the greatest icon, the greatest entertainer ever to live, the most famous person ever to live, and left him for a normal life to marry the world's greatest athlete, who became a woman. <laughs> Was it normal? <laughs> and so, you know, people ask me now, I still have people ask me, well, did you have any, any idea that Bruce Jenner would would you? This man was like all muscles and hair and much, you know, he was the world's greatest athlete. There was not a clue that he had any feminine attribute at all. So no, I didn't have a clue until I had had two baby boys with him. Brody was 18 months old and Brandon was almost three. And this impossibly masculine person who, by the way, Elvis was well aware of. There's a passage in my book where we talk about that. Elvis and I are watching the 76 Olympics and we're watching this astonishing American, you know, run around the track and his muscles flexed and, you know, good looking all American guy and Elvis said, turned to me, we're sitting in bed watching it and, and we've been watching this Bruce Jenner dominate the decathlon and on his way to becoming the world's greatest athlete and Elvis turned to me and said, now you know I'm not gay. I said, yeah, yeah, I know that. I said, but that's one good-looking guy, isn't he? He's handsome. And I said, he sure is. You know, <laughs> we had a little exchange about that and, you know, silliness. But so he was well aware of how good-looking Bruce Jenner was. So for something like that to happen, you know, you just have to look up and go, okay, because that was some kind of joke. <laughs> what would Elvis say about Caitlin? Oh, I think, I think he would probably commiserate with me. And how, you know, it was, you know, we can kind of joke about it now a little bit um, in, in a very loving way and understanding way, because I do believe, like I said, we all have our journey. And out of respect to Bruce, a.k.a. Caitlin, you know, I don't want to make light of it, because it was certainly a horrible struggle for Bruce Jenner. I can't imagine, you know, having to go through life, but feeling disenfranchised in her body to not, at least, you know, I've always been happy being a woman. I didn't have to struggle with that. So my greater empathy had to go to him. Um, so I, I just can't imagine, you know, going through that. But I think I think Elvis would have been, you know, at, at first shocked like I was. I felt like the, my world had fallen apart. Um, but I, I think he would probably take the position that I did that, you know, this is another human being that has really struggled and more than 
achieved everything that a man could. Um, in fact, I've said that to Caitlin since then. I said, you know, you really kicked manhood's ass. <laughs> you are the world's greatest athlete. Uh, now let's just see if you can be a good human being, you know, and just try to be a better parent and try to be a better human being. So it's it's a strange thing, you know. I don't I don't discount anyone's reaction to it because it's for me it was shocking. It disrupted my world. It disrupted my future. I wanted to be married forever and to raise our kids together, and I had to make another choice again in life to say. I wish you well. I waived child support. I got no child support. I got no alimony. I just said, God bless you. In fact, he even said, Bruce said then, um, I think I'll probably go to Denmark and have the sex reassignment. So that was the first time <laughs> that was my Denmark connection <laughs> in the moment. Um, but you know, you, you have to have a lot of empathy for people and I, you don't have to understand a phenomenon like that to just be kind about it and be, you know, and wish people well, because certainly it's been, it was a horrible struggle for him.